we're live. That sure does beat the alternative, Back right? Back for the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd rather be alive than the other one. Yep. <laughs> for a little while, anyway. We're going to wait for next week to cover lies in the textbooks. Okay. And talk about something a bit, little bit different. Okay, tonight. you got a lot of Bible scriptures up there. Something a lot different. Okay. The guy that was a former Mormon bishop used to be a good one. Good Christian. Um, and it was weird because over it was overnight because he sent me these books a couple of years ago and I called him where I got them just you know to say thank you and all and he said that he has him and his wife have left Christianity because the New Testament is not valid. Discussion. What are you going to discuss? Well, it's valid or not? It's God's word. And this is God his. It's valid. This is his. <laughs> um, his excuse. Um. What excuse did he use to abandon Christianity? Go to Luke uh, 2 4. And see, there's a footnote there. Um, Is it Luke 2 4 in that Mormon Bible? No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> this I is think so. Judaism. <laughs> um, yeah, Lee Baker, he wrote books on how to confront Mormons and to and he gave his testimony and shared how he how we got out of Mormonism on our channel um, several months back. Okay. I guess she's ready for his own little world. Be a God. No, 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 no. He, he's out of Mormonism. <laughs> oh, he's out he of got Mormonism. out of Mormonism. I thought you said he went from Christianity to Mormonism. No, he was Catholic, Mormon, and um, got out and went to Judaism. Okay. You can't get, you can't get all yeah, I don't want to talk about the man, but it sounds to me like he's studying religion and not Jesus Christ. Is there a footnote for Luke 2 4? It says, refers to not where Joseph presently lived, but the town that his ancestors' roots. So King David grew up there. Yep. Joseph was a descendant from David. And the trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem would be taken, would have taken at least three days. In about 90 miles. Yep. And I'm about to interject, insert a video, a short video from last night. This is what um, David said um, uh, on this. And um, what about all the manuscripts? that are missing from from the Bible that in uh, like the footnotes. Like this one says Matthew sixteen eight, some of the earliest manuscripts conclude. They do not it's not supposed to be there. The uh Well see what is what is yours say in your Bible? This one? Yeah. That's the thing. This one doesn't have a footnote, but the does, one I, does it have parentheses or or big italics around the from verse uh, nine through the end of the, the chapter. Yes, sir. That's the same. That, that's your footnote. Right. Oh, it's telling you that this was not in the original language. Okay. But that is from the uh, the Antioch text, I believe it is. 
the the parentheses around them them, them that chat the, them verses is telling you that that was not in the Alexandrian text. The Alexandrian text was not discovered until the mid eighteen hundreds. So, all the all the newer versions that are written today will have that footnote or parentheses around it because it's not in the Alexandrian text. It's in the King James Version. It's, it's not, you won't find that in the King James Version because right. they use the Antioch text. Right, but his it's, point is it's still false. It's not supposed to be no, there. No, it's just taken from a different manuscript. It wasn't in that manuscript. But most most people, but most people prefer the Antioch text since it's the oldest. Now, does that refer to just this one or all of them? There's well, well there's others. There's other places in there, in in newer versions, where they they they'll revert back to the Alexandrian text. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, that's why the parentheses around them two verses. They're not in the Alexandrian text. They're in the Antioch text, but they're not in the Alexandrian text. Hmm. And the Alexandrian text is less than 200 years old. But you had these two, one guy's name's Hort. I can't remember the West other guy's Cotton name. Hort, yeah. West Cotton Hort. West, West, West Cotton Hort. You got what, these two guys that translated the Alexandrian text into Greek, from Greek to English. And so, you have a lot of people, when they started writing newer versions, or different versions of the Bible, they used, they were using their, their text that they translated. So it doesn't matter if it's in there or not. I'd rather have a Bible made your way with the parentheses around it. But I sure enough won't know what the parentheses were for. Hmm. You've got you've got a it sounds like you've got an Antioch text um, but with Alexandrian notations in it. Okay. So that's what he says, and if you get this, um, Biblical Pillars of the Messianic Age, he says that this is um, why the New Testament is not valid. These verses, he has told me numerous times to, um, to look them up, and... Um, we'll, we'll just look up a couple of them and look up Jer uh, Ezekiel 24, 37, 24, and 326. Um, yeah, and dad, go to Jeremiah 33, 16 through 26. Took me a minute on the Jeremiah 31. 16. No, uh, 33, 16. All right. Go ahead. Just verse 16. Uh, well, it says 16 through 26. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a, lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. No Levitical priest shall never lack a man in my presence to burn offerings, to burn gain offerings, and to make sacrifices forever. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant, with the day of my covenant with the night, so that day and night will not come at their appointed time. Which one? Uh, yeah, that's fine. But his point is, 
um, doctrine that's not found in the Old Testament, the Trinity, the second coming, human um, predestination, mm -hmm. salvation by faith. Mm -hmm. Go to, uh, I, know, I know this one, 1 John 5, 7 in, the, in the, my study Bible. And answer, and, and really answer this. Um, and, and while he's doing that, Don, go ahead, go ahead and read your um, Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty-four through twenty-six. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they, and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Okay. What does that footnote say? Hmm? To first John five, five seven and eight. You read the verse first. Yeah, go ahead. For there be, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Hmm? It said starting with heaven and the first half of verse eight, ending with in earth, there are missing from nearly all Greek manuscripts and undefined witnesses of the Trinity is supported by other scripture. Or unified witnesses of the Trinity is supported by the other scriptures. Yep. So how do you answer that? How answer what? That it's not, because his point, this point is that that's- Catholics do not believe in Predestination. They do not believe in the Holy Trinity. Who? The Calvinists don't believe in the Holy Trinity. Right. They don't believe anybody can be saved or rejected. But this but, isn't Calvinism. Okay. This is J Judaism. It's Judaism. Yeah. Okay. This says, okay, yep. Uh, I am a sinner. I am a prideful man. I am lost without God in my life. I seek his spirit in his word. I seek his truth in his word and I do truly honestly value his authentic scriptures. That must be the reason Christians don't talk about the New Testament. Um, in the Holman Christian um, study Bible, go to Mark 16, 9 through 20. There should be a footnote there. Mark what? Uh, 16. Mark 16, 19 and 20? Uh, 9 through 20. It says these verses do not appear in the old manuscripts of Mark's gospel. Therefore, one should be cautious about building a doctrine based upon these verses and not supported by other scriptures. My thing is, take the Bible for what it says and not for what a Bible scholar has put in, put in the margins. Is that a reasonable thing to say? Yeah, I agree with that. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think you're supposed to take the Bible literally and not 
You're supposed to read it to get what God's saying out of it, not to put in it what you think. Right. Well, what do you think about that about that footnote, though? I don't know. I don't know what the Bible this is. I'm not sure what the. I'm like Don. I, I don't, you know. I take from from what I read in the Bible, and I just kind of go from there. Yeah. Like I said, while we was on break, King James version of the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit. It is accurate and true, and there are no errors in it. I believe that. Absolutely not. And they can say anything they want to say, and I believe what the King James Bible says. I believe it to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing, nothing but, but the truth. truth. Yep. <laughs> and just because it wasn't in the manuscript somewhere thousands of years ago, it's in the King James Bible. It is. Well, even this scripture here, even with what in the manuscripts, it still falls along with the other gospels of Jesus Christ. So mm -hmm. there you go. That's very good. Well, the Bible talks all the time about the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yep. So I got it? a nephew who said that there is no such thing as the Trinity because the word's not in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The word auto the word is not in the Bible. The word automobile is not in the Bible. No, it isn't. All Airplane automobiles. Either. <laughs> so clarity in the Hebrew scriptures the Lord the God of Abraham des, uh, describes himself 88 times in the Hebrew scriptures as total totally sovereign and a supreme single entity and this says I'll, I'll just read a couple up uh, from the, from the top um, my glory will I not have uh, to author. You shall have no other gods before me. God is not a man. He should lie. Um, not, uh, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a mortal. So the redemption of humanity, and here's some scriptures, you read it for yourself. Um, uh, the uh, clear will of God and it says um, and he said this it is a small thing that thou should be my servant to rise up from the tribe of Jacob and restore the preserve uh, restore the preserve of Israel I will also give Give thee for a light to the Gentiles, uh, I, uh, that thou may may be the salvation unto the earth. So you can see the you know the plan A B A through Z the whole alphabet. The clear will of God. And he uh, Isaiah forty nine. Six, if one of y'all want to read that. 49.6. Uh-huh. You know, the Bible is true from cover to cover. And he said it is a light thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore and preserve Israel. I will also give thee a light to the Gentiles that they may be a salvation to the end of the earth. Yep. But what you don't know um, that you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> Um, of course, that's very, very true. So, okay, here's the, the Jewish view. Isaiah 49.6. Donald, if you want to go there. I'm going to read what you got on the screen. That says the Jewish view. Yep. 
And he said, it is a small thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. In the Christian view, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So the Jewish, the Jew people are, the Jews are saying that everybody can be saved. And the Christians are saying billions are lost, no chance of salvation. That's where it's getting. That's what it's saying. Right. It's saying salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which you must be saved. Right. So all people can be saved their choice yep and the jewish view and he said it is a small thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of jacob and to restore the preserves of israel okay it's a small thing it's a small thing to be a pastor it's a small thing to be a preacher it's a small thing to be a teacher yeah i will also give the for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. He's going to give a light so the Gentiles can be saved as well. So it says everybody can be saved. Both of them says everybody, everybody can be saved. Can be saved. Yep. Neither one of them says that anybody's lost. Yep. It doesn't talk about the lost. Neither one of them talks about the lost. What? Just say it. But yeah, it talks about salvation. Then why? Anybody can be saved in both verses. Yep. It doesn't say anything about being, being lost. Neither one of them talks about lost at all. Then what's the point of this then? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. What's the point? Jewish view. Noahide laws, the Torah. Christian view that we hold permanently. The new covenant, old covenant, to new covenant. Okay. The cross to the old covenant to no covenant. Go ahead, Donald. Just a coincidence or a twist of fate or a fluke or a happenstance or a stroke of bad luck or a strange chance, right? No. No. Just 100 years ago, these were valid Christian scriptures. What was valid scriptures? These. Okay. They were valid Mormon scriptures scriptures those were okay right well, this says that mark 16 was invented scholars agree john 8 1 through 11 invented scholars agree first john invented uh five through seven uh five seven and eight i mean invented scholars agree all these are saying that the scholars are saying that it's all made up. Okay. But I like Bibles like, kind of like this one. They don't have footnotes. Yeah. You know. I got King James on my cell phone. It doesn't have footnotes. Yeah, on, on my phone that I'm casting from, my Bible app, it does not have footnotes. Mm -hmm. It's got Bible studies. But, but here's, the, here's the story. Back in 1611, they, the King James translators had manuscripts. And they mm -hmm. wrote it down very carefully. And here's how 
here's how it works. God purified his word, what was it, seven times? And I believe that the King James Version was, um, you know, the last and, and, and purified. Now, in a 1611 edition, you get what is called the Apocrypha books. Mm -hmm. It's originally 14 of them. Originally, 14 of them. Catholic Bible has 11 still today. Yep, yep, this one has 11. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they say it's where God breathed word. Right. But the who, the Catholics? Mm -hmm. Yep, the Catholics wanted the Apocrypha in, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So the King James people kept it in the Bible. And it wasn't until... until uh, the Baptist came along and said, this isn't scripture. It's maybe history, but it's not scripture. And that's where we get the Bible we, we have now. I think it was not just the Baptist that said that. I think they were convinced before they threw that out as a whole. Yeah. Um, but you see, Bible like this, and, you can look for yourself. There's no footnotes. Mm -hmm. Now, that's all you need, right? Well, I go back to what I said. I believe it was written by the Holy Spirit. These guys are mortal. They're scholars. Absolutely. You can go to school forever and not learn it all. Yeah. This is their belief. This is what they think, their theology. Right, right. I don't agree with their theology. Right. <laughs> agree with agree with God's agree theology. With God's theology. <laughs> um, and uh, what is your personal perspective? Uh, of what? The Holy Trinity? Yeah. One guy? Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you understand it? Not completely. So, do you understand gravity? I understand gravity. On but, Earth. But do you know what it is? That's if you drop something that's going to fall to the ground. Gravity is <laughs> going to pull it down. Yep. But what is pulling that CD to, to the ground? Gravity. C can you fill up uh, my cup and paint it blue? Nobody knows what gravity is. People study it all the time, sure, but you know they don't know what it is. Um, well, there's a lot of times you don't know what it is. You know it's hot outside, but you can't see it. <laughs> right. You know it's cold out there, but you can't see it. It's true. You can feel it. <laughs> well, Genesis 1-1 in, in the Bible says... In the beginning, there's time. God created the heavens, there's space, and the earth, there's matter. Guess what? That's a trinity. Mm -hmm. Time, space, and matter, it has to go in that order. Time is a trinity. Seconds, minutes, Past, hours. present, and future. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Back to the future. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, space has heaven has a trinity length, width, and height and matter has a trinity solid, liquid, gas and they all have to go in that one section, in that one area or it just doesn't work does that make sense? Pretty much. It's not evolution. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, don't, they don't evolve into something else. Um, the human spirit does. Yeah. It leaves the body. Yeah, let's go to my uh, trin some Trinity scriptures and talk about the Trinity. Because that's a... Uh, Holy Trinity. That's a... 
that is a very, very good uh, topic. Because you got First John 5 7, right? There are three that bear record in heaven and on earth. Let's see. I'm not finding it here. Um, well, Don, go to. Um, while I'm doing this, look. Uh, um, the Great Commission, Matthew 28. Do what? Uh, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Yep, the Great Commission. It'll take a minute on this thing. <laughs> the Great Commission. Like dial up, and then it wants to sell me something. Oh. <laughs> well, the Great Commission is uh, pretty interesting. Because you got um Yeah, go ahead, Don. Go ahead, Don. But you want me to read eighteen? Eighteen through twenty? Eighteen through twenty. That's and Jesus just fine. came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Yep. But Father, did you no, did you notice that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? It's singular, not plural. Mm -hmm. How do you decipher this verse if you don't believe in the, in the Trinity? 1 Timothy 1 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and I got it here on the screen. Oh, okay. Uh, Donald? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, God our, our Savior, Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus is the Savior, right? Mm hmm. The deity of Christ, Colossians 1, and this is what, all of this is why we hold the Bible to truth. For by him, Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. And they were created by him and for him. Mm -hmm. Again, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, the Lord our God is one. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's, it's all there. In 19, um, Matthew 28, 18, Jesus had all powers given unto me in heaven and in earth. And John says that Jesus was with God in the beginning. Yep. And it was God. Absolutely. That's John 1 1. Exodus chapter 3 states God said to Moses, I am that I am. Mm -hmm. And this is what you need to say when you when the Pharaoh says, Who sent you? I am has sent me unto you. What an answer. John 8, um, this is Jesus speaking, correct? Before Abraham was, I am. So instead of us rejecting Christianity, we reject Judaism, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't that be a safe a safe route to go? Yeah. Because if the Bible were indeed false, it would have made worldwide news. But Judaism goes by the five books of Moses. Right. And a true Jew 
doesn't believe that Christ is king yet. Right. They're still waiting on him. They're still waiting on him. That's why they will start sacrificing back up. Yep. Daniel 9. And they're ready to build a temple now and start sacrificing again. Yep. Ain't that something? Uh-huh. <laughs> All they're waiting is that that command to build the... And they're trying to usher in God's Son. They're trying to usher in the Christ, the Messiah. And they're going to usher... They're going to usher in the Antichrist. There you <laughs> go. Usher in. <laughs> and they're going to say that that is... They will. That is... This is the Messiah. They'll worship him. And they'll For worship him. But in the middle of the tribulation, mm -hmm. he'll break the treaty. Mm -hmm. And he'll demand to be worshipped himself. Yep. Fascinating stuff. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And don't want to chase this rabbit too much because <laughs> we don't believe in, in this. Okay. <laughs> what is it we don't believe in? Judaism. Oh, no. Uh, but we'll end it here. Don, can you explain this? Stretch the width, stretch the length. On a shoe? Yep. Well, yeah, if it's made out of leather, it'll stretch. But what he's saying is that the Bible, that the New Testament is being stretched. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. They're saying the Hebrew Bible is being stretched. Yep. Um, it's fascinating stuff. <laughs> yeah. Different religions. And there is a ton of different religions. And everybody is right. And everybody's right. <laughs> and nobody's wrong. <laughs> you know why that's true? Why? Because we all have to decide for ourselves. Yeah, that's true. We either reject Christ or we accept Christ. That's true. That's the bottom line. If it's your choice, you're going to stand in front of the, the two religions. Jesus or God on Judgment Day and give account for yourself. Yep. They're not going to ask you what your mama thought or your daddy thought. <laughs> or what your friends thought. Or what yeah. your friends thought. Or what church you went to. Or whether you believe the five books of Moses or the whole Bible. Yeah. You're going to have to answer for yourself. So you're right. You're absolutely right. And you're self alone. Whatever you believe. Yep. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the Lord of <laughs> Yep. And he will judge you. And he died for all, not some, not a select few that God had already determined he was going to send to heaven and the rest of them could go to hell. That's false. Yep. I don't believe that. I believe Jesus Christ shed his blood for everybody that has ever been born, that is born, and ever will be born. And I believe that we have the free will to accept that sacrifice or reject that sacrifice. Yep. And I also believe once you accept it, you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. No, no. Because I tried. <laughs> you can't. You can't have it. <laughs> I know that. Well, that's it. That's it. That's our two sessions for Tuesday night. Two sessions, two tonight, two for two. Two for two Tuesday. Ha, 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 ha.